Hey, Lightweights. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Oppenheimer. Uh, so I have basically been living under a rock for the past two years. I, <laughs> I have a toddler and I haven't seen a movie in the theaters since she's been born. I think I've seen probably one. Um, so I have not seen this or Barbie yet. So when the whole Barbenheimer craze was taking over, I haven't seen either of them. So I figured it's probably time I at least watch one of them. So I decided to start with Oppenheimer uh, because it just, you know, won a couple awards. <laughs> uh, so it seemed like it, I should probably watch it. And it fits perfectly since I'm watching all of the Nolan films right now. Anyways, I'm super excited to watch this. I do have a degree in history. Uh, before I started YouTube, I was a history teacher focusing on world history. Um, so my background knowledge on this is from a different lens. Um, I don't have a ton of U.S. history um, background in my studies, uh, and I didn't teach U.S. history. So most of my knowledge base is the world history side. So I'm really, really excited and curious to see uh, the take that this film brings, <laughs> um, kind of what it shows us. And I know it's it's not just about the atomic bomb. It's about Oppenheimer. I'm pretty sure this is based after a book. So there's going to be more going on than just like the Manhattan Project. But I'm really curious to look at it through that history lens. Um, and I'm not going to turn this into a history lesson. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, oh, this is accurate, or that's not accurate, or this, or this, or that, or that, because I, I personally don't enjoy doing that. Um, I like to try to separate the, the two. Um, I think there's a time and place for things to be historically accurate. And I think there's a time and place for them to, um, be able to have a little bit of freedom <laughs> and kind of take their own spin on things. So I'm not going to turn this into a history lesson, but I, I, if I have something insightful to say from that background, I will, I will put it in there. Uh, but I'm really, I'm just really excited to watch this and to see what all the hype is about because at everybody I have not talked to a single person who has not absolutely said this film is a must watch so that makes me really excited uh if you haven't already or if you're new here or if you think you are but you're not quite sure would you subscribe to the channel hit that bell button just double check there's some wonky things going on with youtube some people say that they've been unsubscribed from the channel uh some people could have sworn they were subscribed but they're not subscribed so just double check it doesn't hurt. <laughs> it takes two extra seconds. So go on over and make sure you're subscribed or there's like a little button at the bottom that you can click. Just, you know, click that. Uh, and feel free to uh, hit that bell button so that you get notified when I post future movie reactions. I would like to start upping them, but at this point I'm only doing one every other week. Uh, so, you know, hitting that bell button is helpful because then you know when it's the correct week for me to post. Uh, but all right, now that all that is done, let's get into it. I need to go to the lecture, sir. Why? It's Mills Bohr. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. Oh, no, not you, Oppenheimer. <laughs> you finish coaching those plates. <laughs> Is he going to poison his professor? <laughs> wow. You were at my lecture. You asked the only good question. I heard you give the same question. At Harvard, question. yes, and you asked the same question. Why ask again? I'd like your answer. <laughs> Get to Germany, study under <clears throat> Max Born, learn the ways of theory. I'll send word. Where am I? Is that the guy from Murder on the Orient Express? Um, I forget his name now. Greatest scientific mind of our time. Of his time. Einstein published his theory of relativity more than 40 years ago now. But never embraced the quantum world it revealed. So originally I thought the black and white was like modern times and the color was like the past, but this also seems like the past. So I'll be curious to see if I can figure out what the distinction is. Well, the purpose of this institute is to provide a haven for independent minds. That's you. You are the man for the job. Well, then I'll consider it. Cocky son of a bitch, ain't he? <laughs> hey, Yank. Lecturing on the new physics. This I have to hear. I'm an American myself. How surprising. Um, let me know if you need any help with the English. 
Hey, the bulls think there's an alpha delta chain in that home. Frankfurt and Fischilin energy in the verbinding is up a name in the relative translation. What's he saying? Trace by the devil. Oh, I must have missed the. Mr. Lomlitz? No. Yeah. Yes, this is it. Please. Take a seat. Is light made up of particles or waves? Quantum mechanics says it's both. How can it be both? It can't. It can't. But it is. It's paradoxical, and yet, it works. Ah, <laughs> yes. I was like, I can't wait to see how many uh, students he has now. Yes, you. Your math is better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Oppenheimer's file contained detail of his activities in Berkeley. Why would they have started a file on Dr. Oh, okay. So the black and white is like his point of view. Well, if I remember correctly, the FBI was taking license plates outside suspected communist gatherings and his name popped up. So the colored is Oppenheimer's perspective and the black and white is Straw's perspective? Robert here says he's not a communist. Well, then he doesn't know enough about it. Oh, I've read Das Kapital, all three volumes. Does that count? Ownership is theft. Property. Property? Property, not ownership. I'm sorry, I read it in the original German. <laughs> I like a little wiggle room. Do you always tell the party line? I like my wiggle room too. Oh, all right. Read this. Well, in this part, Vishnu reveals his multi arms. Oh, shit, this is going to be the line. And now I have become death. Destroyer of worlds. That is not how I thought that line was going to be in this movie. <laughs> All right. When I was a kid, I thought if I could find a way to combine physics and New Mexico, my life would be perfect. Interesting. I wonder how accurate that is. And Max, so we saw today, one of my favorite places in the world. Tomorrow is that? Climate. What's it called? Los Alamos. Is that accurate? My changing views on Russia did not mean a sharp break from those who held different views. For a year or two during a previous marriage, my wife Kitty had been a Communist Party member. So that's his wife, she's just sitting on the couch as he's talking about his fling. So, you're a biologist. Well, somehow I have graduated to housewife. Can you explain quantum mechanics to me? Seems baffling. Oh, they weren't married yet when he was with Florence's character? Jean? You're married to Dr. Harrison. Not married. There is someone that I feel... She feels that way? Sometimes. <laughs> okay, so that answered that question. What are you doing? It's a trade union. Filled with communists. So I haven't joined the party. They won't let me bring you onto the project because of this shit. We've all heard about Einstein and Zillard's letter to Roosevelt warning him the Germans could make a bomb, and I know what it means for the Nazis to have a bomb. When I don't, it's not your people they're herding into camps. It's mine. But how would Borden have access to Oppenheimer's security file? Because somebody gave it to him. Somebody who wanted Robert silenced. Who? Who knows? His opinions on the atom became definitive. And he wasn't always patient with us mere mortals. And they drafted in Robert to make me look like a fool. But, Dr. Oppenheimer, we've already heard from Admiral Strauss that these isotopes could be useful to our enemies in the production of atomic weapons. I'd say isotopes are less useful than electronic components, but more useful than a sandwich. Did he give the file? I have been calling to him all fucking day. I can't even imagine having to deal with postpartum depression before they knew what postpartum depression was. I, I, I'm ashamed to ask. Anything. Take Peter. Sure. 
for, for a while, Hunk. A while. We're awful people. Selfish, awful people. Forget I asked. Selfish, awful people, they don't know the selfish and awful. So, Robert, you see beyond the world we live in. There is a price to be paid for that. Of course, we'll help you. Dr. Oppenheimer. I'm Colonel Groves. This is Lieutenant Colonel Nichols. I didn't know who's in this. What have you found out? You're a dilettante, a womanizer, a suspected communist. I'm a New Deal Democrat. I said suspected. <laughs> Theatrical, egotistical, neurotic. Nothing good, no. Not even he's brilliant, but... Well, brilliance is taken for granted in your circle, so no. <laughs> the Germans know more than us anyway. The Russians don't. Remind me, who were we at war with? Somebody with your past doesn't want to be seen downplaying the importance of security from our communist allies. We're taken, but no. <laughs> you don't get to say no to me. It's my job to say no to you when you're wrong. So you have the job now? Uh, I'm considering it. <laughs> my favorite response. Oppenheimer couldn't run a hamburger stand. I couldn't, but I can run the Manhattan Project. Don't need a school, stores, a church. Why? We don't let scientists bring their families. We'll never get the best. You want security, build a town, build it fast. Where? So cool. 40 miles, any direction. I have to find the perfect spot. For success. Build them a town, fast. <laughs> What can I tell them? Heisenberg, Diebner, both are bored. What do these men have in common? Uh, the greatest minds on atomic theory. Yeah. Holy shit, I didn't know he was in this. You know isotopes, and you know explosives better than anyone in the world. But you can't tell us what you're doing. <laughs> this is a national emergency. I've got some skeletons. They put me in charge. They need us. Until they don't. You know, it really would be quicker to take a plane. No, a plane's too risky. The country needs us. Especially nowadays, frickin' Boeing. <laughs> I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon, but I know the Nazis can't. We have no choice. The second thing you have to do is appoint Hans Bethe to run the theoretical division. What was the first? Take off that ridiculous uniform. You're a scientist. <laughs> Groves is insisting we join. Tell Groves to go shit in his hat. <laughs> when I calculated the chain reaction, I found a rather troubling possibility. Exponential? No, 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 no. This is fantasy. Is this when they're worried they're gonna ignite the atmosphere? Whose, whose work is this? Tellers. What do you take it to mean? Neutrons smash into nucleus, releasing neutrons to smash into other nuclei. This time, the chain reaction doesn't stop. It would ignite the atmosphere. Robert, this is yours, not mine. This music is fucking ominous, man. When you now tell us critical assumptions, the real picture emerges. Bottom line. The chances of an uncontrolled nuclear reaction are near zero. Near zero. Near zero! What do we think? Anyone? I've been thinking about implosion. Explosives around the sphere blast inwards, crushing the material. I'd like to investigate that idea. I'll talk to ordinance. Can you blow things up? I've offered jobs to all the lives of men, librarians, computation. We cut down on staff, keep families together. Are these women qualified? That's smart. Compartmentalization is the key to maintaining it's security. Only the top men. Who presumably communicate with subordinates? These men aren't stupid, they can be discreet. I don't like it. You don't like anything enough for that to be a fair test. <laughs> when are you gonna try it out? We did. The first self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction. Didn't Groves tell you? No. Oh. 
generalissimo, I quit. Thanks for nothing. Better off without him. Aren't you more concerned about his discretion out there? We'll have him killed. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He is not kidding. I'm just a humble soldier. Mm -hmm. You're neither humble nor just a soldier. You studied engineering at MIT. Guilty as charged. Well, now we understand each other. Perhaps you can get me my security clearance so I can perform this miracle for you. Yeah, why bring him on to the project if you're not going to give him security clearance? I'd like to remind you what we talked about in Berkeley. Departmentalization, I understand completely. To do so, I am going to have to share a few things that General Groves told me not to. Sorry, General, I said I understood, not that I agreed. Okay. <laughs> Gentlemen? Uh... Your Q clearance came through. It's important you not maintain or renew any questionable associations. This fucking guy. You said in your statement that you had to see Jean Tadlock in 1943. Where did you go? I can't tell you. Why not? Because you're a communist. So she was extremely unhappy. Did you find out why she had to see you? Because she was still in love with me. That was really well done. This is a man who has killed communists with his own hands. I'm not the judge of who should or should not have information. It's my business to stop it from going through illegally. He talked to a friend of his who's an acquaintance of someone on the project. And you thought Pash would be satisfied with that? I was attempting to give them Altonton without opening a can of worms. I told them a cock and bull story. Might we know through whom the contact was made? That would in involve people who are not to be involved in this. Is that uh, someone a member of the project? Ah, this is so stressful. Instead of us going on certain steps, which may come to your attention and be disturbing to you, I would like to discuss those with you first. I'm not formulating a plan. I'll just have to digest the whole thing. Oh, I don't like this. I was gone by the time Oppenheimer finally offered it up. Gone. They felt my time would be better spent in Europe determining the status of the Nazi bomb project. Who did? General Groves. He transferred me to London. Interesting. Interesting. Early Christmas present for you all. <laughs> Is it big enough to end the war? To end the war. <sighs> he took a wrong turn. We're ahead. And with you here to help us, Nils. So could you could you give us a moment, gentlemen? <laughs> He's like, I just carried these all the way here. Didn't you try to kill it at the AEC meeting after the Russian bomb test? No. But that was the recommendation of the AEC, was it not? After hours of discussion about the best response. An H-bomb is 1,000 times the power. So this is the same as straws. Do we really need more deterrence than our current arsenal of atomic bombs? You, you drown in 10 feet of water or, or 10,000, what's the difference? We can already drown Russia. They know it. Now they will drown Mutually assured destruction! I said Teller's designs are still as impractical as they were during the war. An hydrogen bomb can be made to work, Abby. You know that. I don't believe we should commit all our resources to that chance. Then how would you have Truman reassure the American people? So this is the same meeting, different perspective. Never one of those to bandy around terms like sabotage. But Mr. Borden was? As I understand it, possible. How was Mr. Borden able to put together such a detailed indictment? How indeed. Their defeat seems assured. Not if you're a GI preparing to invade. We can end this war. But how do we justify using this weapon on human beings? Because their fear of Russia. When the world learns the terrible secret of Los Alamos, our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. International cooperation that Roosevelt always envisaged. 
It's fascinating that they're touching on that. Okay. Everybody ready? Hmm? I think you need a bigger wall next time. I worry about an America where we do these things and no one protests. Pearl Harbor and three years of brutal conflict in the Pacific buys a lot of latitude with the American public. Not to mention all the propaganda making Japanese people not seem human anymore, but that's... Deadly neutron effects for a mile in all directions from one single device dropped from a barely noticed B-29. The atomic bomb will be a terrible revelation of divine power. Military targets. But there aren't any big enough. Perhaps a vital war plant with workers housed nearby. I hate this. The Potsdam Peace Conference in July will be President Truman's last chance to have that conversation. Can you give us a working bomb by then? Absolutely. We will test fire before the conference. No pressure. God. How are your hands not shaking to the point where you just, like, kill everybody? I would not be able to be trusted with this. <laughs> What's with the radiation cloud? Without high winds, it should settle within two to three miles. Evacuation measures are in place. But we need good weather for visibility, so it has to be fine. I just watched a freaking documentary about how there was a camp of elementary school aged girls. They were doing like a dance program. And they were within... Everybody, mattresses. Put the mattress uh, underneath. <laughs> yeah, mattresses are gonna help. They were within the freaking zone to the point where the shock wave hit their camp. And then when they went outside to look, they thought it was snowing. It was freaking from the bomb. It was radiation. But they thought it was snow, so they were rubbing it into their face and their skin. And they were so, like, thrown off because it was hot. Only one of them lived to the age of 30. I literally just learned that like yesterday. I just watched a documentary on the Cold War and they were talking a little bit about Oppenheimer and this. Three years, 4,000 people, $2 billion. If it doesn't go off, we're both finished. What's that equate to now? The $2 billion. Are we saying there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Nothing in our research over three years supports that conclusion, except it's the most remote possibility. How remote? Chances are near zero. Near zero. What do you want for theory alone? Zero would be nice. It's fascinating how you know what's going to happen and you can still feel so stressed. <laughs> 20 minutes. <sighs> Watch that needle. If the detonators don't charge or the voltage drops below one volt, you hit that button, you abort. Understood? Understood. <sighs> 90 seconds to detonation. <laughs> Seconds to detonation. Is it button? Yeah. <sighs> Dude, I don't know how they aren't all just shit in their pants. Some of these people are way too calm. What are you doing? And now I am 
become death. The destroyer of worlds. I love that they did that. So fucking cool. Because that's exactly how it happens, too. God. Stalin. Hoped we'd use it against Japan. That's it. Robert, we've given them an ace. It's for them to play the hand. Should I come with you to Washington? What for? That'd be so fucking difficult. Like, your life for three years was this. And now you got it to work and immediately done. Roll out, pack up, cut off. An American airplane dropped one bomb on Hiroshima and destroyed its usefulness to the enemy. It's too soon to... It's too soon to determine what the results of the bombing are. But I'll bet the Japanese didn't like it. How does he convey so much through just his eyes? It's freaking. I just wish we had it in time to use against the Germans. Holy shit. That was so well done. <sighs> that was so well done. You think anyone in Hiroshima or Nagasaki gives a shit who built the bomb? They care who dropped it. I did. Don't let that crybaby back in here. America and Russia may be likened to two scorpions in a bottle, each capable of killing the other, but only at the risk of his own life. Those were your words from the other day. We needed to pivot. But how would you know what Time magazine is going to write? Henry Luce is a friend. You've sat here and let me tell you how it's done, but you've been far ahead all along. What was it you said about Borden? Why get caught holding the knife yourself? I'm beginning to think Borden was holding the knife for you. You're just now beginning to think that, really? No trial, you can't give Oppenheimer a platform. You can't martyr him. We need a systematic destruction of Oppenheimer's credibility so he can never again speak on matters of national security. When he appeals, and trust me, he will, I appoint a board. They will, of course, have counsel. This is just how the game is played. Well, forgive my naivete. Amateurs seek the sun, get eaten. Power stays in the shadow. Nobody told your client to misrepresent his former answer. Misrepresent? It, it was 12 years ago. Can we hear this recording? You don't have the clearance, Mr. Garris. But you're reading it into the record. <laughs> Frost told him that you and Ruth Tolman have been having an affair for years. He convinced Lawrence that Richard died of a broken heart. That's absurd. What's the heart? A broken heart. <laughs> she never found out. Oh my god. 
Why go through all this against a man who has accomplished what Dr. Oppenheimer has? Look at his record. We have an A-bomb and a whole series of it. We have a whole series of super bombs. What more do you want? Mermaids. <laughs> Mr. Borden, during your investigation into Dr. Oppenheimer, did you reach certain conclusions? I did. And did there come a time when you expressed those conclusions in a letter to Mr. J. Edgar Hoover? I hate this so much. How long has counsel been in possession of this letter? I don't think I should be subject to cross-examination by you, Mr. Garrison. Mr. Garrison, given that we on the board have all read the letter, wouldn't it be better to have it in the record? Dude, this is so fucked. The purpose of this letter is to state my opinion, based upon years of study of the available classified evidence, that more probably than not, J. Robert Oppenheimer is <laughs> an agent of the Soviet Union. Following conclusions are justified. I've been asked to testify about Louis Strauss. The views I have to express are my own, but I believe that much I have to say will help to indicate why most of the scientists in this country would prefer to see Mr. Strauss completely out of government. You're Get fucked, Strauss! Get fucked! Get fucked! Commitment to security as demonstrated in the Oppenheimer affair? No. Because of the personal vindictiveness he demonstrated <laughs> against Dr. Oppenheimer. Order. Order. Shouldn't have come out into the sun, bitch. It appears most scientists around this country, Robert Oppenheimer, is now being pilloried and put through an ordeal because he expressed his honest opinions. <laughs> The Oppenheimer matter was initiated and carried through, largely through the animus of Louis Strauss. Oppenheimer made mincemeat out of Strauss's position on the shipment of isotopes to Norway, and Strauss never forgave him this public humiliation. In order to destroy Oppenheimer's effectiveness, and Strauss <laughs> was able to find a few ambitious men who also disagreed with Oppenheimer's positions. Mm. I want to see the vital interests of this country in hands which I understand better and therefore trust more. Sorry. You shook his fucking hand? How you could shake his hand after? I would not fucking shake his hand. I would have spit in his face. <laughs> Same! I the board would have appreciated that. Screw the board. You shouldn't keep them waiting. She'll be here. Do you even want her here? Only a fool or an adolescent presumes to know someone else's relationship and... You're neither, Lloyd. <laughs> Kitty and I, we're grown-ups. We've walked through fire together. She'll do fine. The record demonstrates that Oppenheimer was not interrogated by impartial and disinterested counsel for the Grey Board. I would have protested against the tactics of the man who served, in fact, as the prosecuting counsel. A man appointed not by the board, but by Louis Strauss. It's just it was also very long ago, Mr. Robb, wasn't it? Not really. Long enough to have forgotten. Could you return the card or rip it up? The card whose existence I've forgotten. You Communist Party membership <laughs> card. I haven't the slightest idea. <laughs> I've believed this since I left the party 16 years ago. But 17 years ago. My mistake. But you said... Sorry, 18. <laughs> 18 years ago. <laughs> You don't have to answer that yes or no. You can answer that any way you wish. I know that. Thank you. It's your question. <laughs> it's not properly phrased. Do you understand what I'm getting at? I do. Then why don't you answer it that Because I don't like your phrase. I know he took an intellectual interest in communist ideas. There are two types of communists. Intellectual communists and your plain old regular commie. <laughs> well, I couldn't answer that one. <laughs> I couldn't either. <laughs> I love how she played like all demure and innocent and trapped him. You served your country well. If this is the reward she offers you, then perhaps you should turn your back on her. Damn it, I happen to love this country. Then tell them to go to hell. Confirmation <laughs> hearing. It's now a trial. About a trial. Whose fault is that? I don't know. 
But Oppenheimer said during that day, but by this time, you can meet my eye. You know he's never once said that he regrets Hiroshima? He'd do it all over. Why? Because it made him the most important man who ever lived. J. Robert Oppenheimer, the martyr. I gave him exactly what he wanted. To be remembered for Trinity, not Hiroshima. He should be thanking me. Well, he's not. I'm denied. Yeah? I'm afraid so, sir. All right. <laughs> Who were the holdouts? Um, three, led by the junior senator from Massachusetts. Young guy trying to make a name for himself, didn't like what you did to Oppenheimer. What's his name? Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. <laughs> did you think that if you let them tar and feather you, then the world would forgive you? It won't. We'll see. I hope he told her how good of a fucking job she did, because she killed it. He turned the scientists against me one by one, starting with Einstein. I told you about that. Since nobody really knows what they said to each other that day, is it possible they didn't talk about you at all? Is it possible they spoke about something uh, more important? <laughs> Mmm, <laughs> got him. Fucking got him. In Berkeley, you gave me an award. Hmm? Yes. You all thought that I had lost the ability to understand what I'd started. The award really wasn't for me, it was for all of you. Hmm? Now it's your turn to deal with the consequences of your achievement. And one day, when they've punished you enough, they'll serve you salmon and potato salad. Pat you on the back, tell you all is forgiven. Just remember, it won't be for you. It will be for them. <laughs> She's like, bitch, I did not forget, and I do not forgive. We thought we might start a chain reaction that would destroy the entire world. I remember it well. What of it? I believe we did. Wow. <laughs> um, I have a headache. <laughs> Holy shit, that was phenomenal. <laughs> I think I need to rewatch it. I don't think I can, like... Wow. <laughs> the way... Oh, my God. There's so many things I want to talk about. I don't even know where to start. I guess we'll start at the end. That quote at the end. You You were worried we'd set off a chain reaction... I believe we did. It's just... Oh. They said it in the movie, and that's very... When I was teaching history, this is how I taught it as well. It's like a... I don't want to say widely accepted, because I don't obviously know a lot of historians, but within within the historian community that I knew, um, we pretty much all agree that the Cold War actually started when the atomic bombs were dropped. It It's... I guess, like, not officially. <laughs> if you learn about the Cold War in the textbooks, it will give you specific dates that do not correlate with the dropping of the atomic bomb. But that really, that really is when it was dropped. Because as a historian, whenever I was teaching, um, one of the questions my students would have is, how come you teach things a certain way and then something will change? Or you'll be like, oh, you'll teach the history this way, and then all of a sudden, something's different. And it's kind of because the more puzzle pieces you have, the more clear you can see a picture, right? So I always, when I was introducing history to my students, I always introduced it as a puzzle. 
when you have a couple of the pieces, but you don't know what that final picture is, it's hard to put the picture together. When you're trying to build a puzzle, if you can't look at the picture and you have no idea what you're building, it's really hard to put it together. But the more pieces you have, if you have the entire picture, it makes it much easier to put those pieces together. So now that we're further removed, it's easier to look at the Cold War, World War II, the atomic bombs, and kind of see how the reasoning behind the atomic bombs being dropped. And I promise this is not going to turn into a history lesson, but that line just encapsulates it so perfectly. It really, it, oh. and then I love how they touched on the fact that there is, there are so many different lenses for which you can look at the dropping of the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and arguments to be made in every direction possible. And I'm not going to get into that. We don't have time for that. This is not the discussion. But there is an argument that really the reason we dropped the bombs were because we were afraid of Russia taking any power or any control of Japan. We wanted to be the ones to determine what happened with Japan. We didn't want Russia to get more power. We didn't want Russia access into Manchuria, into Japan, into the territories that Japan had conquered. And that just ties right in. I love how he talked about that. Like, it was it was brief, but I loved how Nolan tied that in there. I love how Nolan tied in the destruction of the atomic bombs and the way that he did it with that, like, woohoo congratulations speech Oppenheimer did, like, shortly after when they were still in Los Alamos. You hear the scream in the background. The cheering and the partying morphs into cries of pain and sobs and heartbreak the images of adults partying and having a great time and celebrating too hard are morphed into the destruction and the disgust of what they just did i loved how he did that as nolan is walking he steps into the corpse and it oh my god that was just so fucking well done that was just so fucking well done it's, I, I, mm, <laughs> I always say this about Nolan, but he fucking, when he makes a film, he researches everything. Like, this was just, um, I need to watch this again. <laughs> I need to watch this again. Holy shit. Holy shit. And it was also fascinating because I know nothing about Oppenheimer. Like I said, my, my lens as a historian is not that side. Um, I didn't study U.S. history. I didn't teach U.S. history. So I don't, I, the whole straws, Oppenheimer, I don't know any of that. That was not, <laughs> like, obviously there are people that I have heard of, you know, I, I have learned like little bits and pieces here and there, but I had no idea all of that happened. So this was just extra fascinating. The way that Nolan tied in the world theater to the actual United States side of it was just so fascinating and so, <laughs> mm, I, <laughs> The bombing itself, like not the bombing itself, I'm sorry, the testing of the bomb itself. I love that he did, you see the mushroom cloud, you see the explosion, and then it's silence and you don't hear anything. You don't hear anything. You don't hear anything. And then, and then the wave and craziness. That's the technical term. Craziness. Because I don't know like what the actual timing of all that was. But not only is I'm pretty okay. I'm not a scientist. I'm pretty sure that's scientifically accurate, though, because you can see faster than you can hear, like the you know. And from all the accounts that I read, everyone should read Hiroshima. Great book. Anyways, the accounts that I have read, I've heard, the interviews I've seen, everyone says, "Oh yeah, we saw it for it. We saw the light. We saw the cloud." Then it was noise and wave, or maybe it was wave and noise at the same time. I don't fucking know. But I love how he incorporated that because not only is it, like, I think scientifically accurate, but corroborates and goes along with the accounts that I am familiar with. But it also just builds that suspense and the tension. And he's just the master of that. I feel like every Nolan film, I say that same thing. He is so good. At building that suspense and, like, cutting to the different scenes and the different, like, stuff and breaking up the timeline. So you're never, like, quite sure, like, okay, wait, I'm here now. Okay, wait, I'm there now. And then you're slowly putting pieces together and it's just building that suspense more and more and more and more. He did that beautifully. He did that beautifully with this movie. 
And I feel like that's one of the things that I just have come to love and expect from his films. I don't know if they're all like that, but I feel like the vast majority of them are. Um, the cutting of the frames, so like, okay, we're here with this character, now we're here with this character, now we're here with this character. It's just like he can build that suspense so fucking well. That was so good. And then with the whole trial thing oh, with straws, like, oh, that had me pumped. That had me pumped. And then that one guy that was supposed to be, like, representing him when he said, well, maybe they're talking about more important things. He fucking knew what he was doing, man. He knew what he was doing. That was, like, the biggest diss you could have possibly given him because that dude seems like a fucking narcissist. And he thinks that he is the most important thing in the room, in the world. And he couldn't possibly not have been on other people's minds. Like, he didn't even, it, that didn't even cross his mind that he wasn't the topic of conversation. He fucking knew, he knew, got punched. And then when the wife didn't shake the hand of that scientist from the H-bomb, oh, kitty, I love you. That was fucking great. That was fucking great. Whew. Okay, I need to calm down. I get why this won so many awards. Um, uh, On here it says seven times Oscar winner. I get it. <laughs> I get it. That was great. Definitely think it needs a rewatch. I, I by the end it was pretty obvious, but I guess you guys can correct me if I'm wrong when I say it just in case. But the black and white was more like the straws perspective and the color was Oppenheimer's perspective. So it wasn't necessarily like, oh, this is like in the past and this is modern day. It was the lens with which we were watching the movie. So like the black and white was Strauss telling Oppenheimer's story from his perspective. And the color was Oppenheimer telling the story from his perspective. I thought that was really cool. And I thought it was crucial to have that. Because I don't, like, I don't know about necessarily like the black and white thing. That was just like artistically cool. But like the two different perspectives. Just the way that that built the story. Oh, chef's kiss. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. So good. Um... See, this is always what happens. As soon as I'm done recording, or like tomorrow, I'm like, fuck, I should talk about that. Should talk about that. Should talk about that. I'm running through my little mental list here. <laughs> Going in my mind palace, like. And I think I talked about the eyes at the end. He just, the way it ended with the pain in his eyes and, the, oh. Dude. So talented. Across the board, just everyone. Talent. Talent everywhere. Which is so freaking good. Let me know your thoughts on the movies. The movie, singular. We watched one. <laughs> it felt like two. Never have I ever sat through a movie that felt, I felt the full three hours, but I was thoroughly entertained every second. I don't even know if that makes sense. But I, I it, you know, some movies are like, wow, that felt like an hour. That didn't feel like three hours. No, this felt like three hours, but it was an amazing three hours, if that makes sense. That was fucking good, man. Let me know your thoughts on the movie in the comments below. What did I miss? As you guys already know, I love when you tell me little factoids and little tidbits that I missed. Leave those in the comments below as well. Oh, one last thing. The freaking representation of postpartum depression. We need that represented more film, especially from time periods that didn't have an understanding of postpartum depression and had no help for it. Represent that more in films, please. Okay, anyways, subscribe to the channel. Double check that you're subscribed because you might think that you are and you're not really, so double check. And then, you know, hit that bell button so you know when I post future reaction videos. Hopefully I can get them up more frequently than I am right now, but fingers crossed. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Leave me all of your cool little factoids in the comments below. And not right now because it's one in the morning, but I'm going to rewatch this tomorrow. <laughs>